Chapter 6 Education in Bukkapatnam Today I am revealing certain incidents that had happened during my school days in Bukkapatnam I would also like to tell you in this context as to what sort of relationship should exist between each other during student days and what rules and regulations they should observe Puttaparthi was a remote village in those days with no modern facilities and conveniences you already know about it this body did not visit any other village in those days leaving puttaparthi however this body used to visit bukkapatnam daily to attend the school myself and some other children would go to the bukkapatnam school together the family in which this body took birth was very poor then the other children in the village were also very poor grihamammai used to prepare some sankati ragi porridge for my lunch that was my semi solid staple food she used to make a small hole in the center of that sankati and put some ground chutney in it there were no tiffin carriers in those days i used to pack my lunch in an old cloth and hang it on my shoulders while going to the school the lunch bell used to ring at 1 o'clock in the afternoon daily as soon as the bell rang we used to run up to the village tank but i could not eat my lunch immediately since the sankati would have dried up by then and got stuck to the cloth hence i used to go to the tank and hold the lunch packet soaked in the water for a few minutes then the solid stuff would come out of the cloth among our classmates there was one boy who belonged to a rich family he brought rice mixed with soup he used to share it in small quantities with all the children i also used to share my sankati with all the children thus we experienced the joy of sharing our food there is so much joy in unity unfortunately today the spirit of unity and love is extinct in the educated class instead jealousy and hatred are increasing day by day i have to tell you about a small matter in this context the teachers in the school used to love me very much every teacher as soon as he entered into our classroom would enquire did raju come Do you know how I lived in those days? I did not have dozens of trousers and shirts like the present day students. I used to have only one set of trousers and shirt for the entire year. As soon as I returned from school, I would wrap a towel around my body and wash my dress and keep them ready for the next day. Thus, I managed with only one set of dress for the entire year. I used to answer well all the questions asked by the teachers but the other boys were not able to do so the literacy rate in the british times was very low there were boys who were quite old in age even in the 5th class in fact i was the youngest we had an english teacher by name mahboob khan he had immense love for me and that love was born out of atmic relationship not bodily relationship he used to be very eager to take up our class the moment he entered the classroom he would persuade the teacher who till then was teaching to leave the class immediately whoever he was as soon as he sat on the chair he would call me and make me sit by his side he used to put his hand endearingly on my shoulders and stroke my head lovingly he was 50 years old then he had no children hence he used to invite me to his house frequently he was a great devotee the moment he entered our class all the children used to make fun of me saying ah raju go go near his chair that was an embarrassing situation for me if i obliged the teacher The children would make fun of me if I didn't go to the teacher as ordered by him he would think that I had disobeyed him nevertheless 
I did not inform the teacher that the boys were making fun of me, nor did I ever behave arrogantly with the children simply because the teachers were treating me so affectionately. One day, I approached my teacher and explained the position in a firm but soft tone thus, Sir, if you call me alone out of all the boys, they may feel unhappy. Please do not, therefore, call me to sit by your side. Allow me to sit along with those boys. The teacher, however, got angry with me. He told me frankly, Let them think what they wish. I am not bothered. I am not doing anything wrong. Therefore, I do not fear anybody. In fact, I love all the children. But I love you a little more. This is due to the divinity latent in you. Whenever any savouries like pakodas were prepared in his house, he would bring some for me packed in a newspaper. I used to humbly reject them, saying, Sir, I do not know whether some non-vegetarian dishes were cooked in your house. Hence, I am sorry, I cannot touch these pakodas. The teacher then used to assure and plead with me, saying, No, Raju, I tell you the truth. I swear on myself, I don't at all allow such things to happen. I have brought these eatables with great love and affection towards you. After obtaining such an assurance, if I took a small piece of that item and ate it, he would feel extremely happy and grateful, shedding tears of joy. There was one teacher called Ayengar in our school. The students in those days had respect as well as fear for this teacher. If they happened to see Sri Ayangar anywhere in the marketplace, the children would silently slip away into the side lanes out of fear. Sri Ayangar came to know of this practice. One day, he was under the misapprehension that I too was avoiding him like the other children. I was the monitor for our class. You see how big I am now? You can imagine how short I must have been in those days. It was my duty to bring one long twig, a stick to cane, of a tamarind tree and keep it ready in a corner of the classroom before our teacher, Sri Ayangar, entered our class daily. One day, he took the twig in his hands as soon as he entered the class and accosted, Hey, Raju, come here. I went near him boldly since I was sure that I did not commit any mistake. He inquired, Why did you slip into the side lane the other day on seeing me? I answered very coolly, Sir, I did not see you. My notebook was with that boy who lived in that lane. I went to his house to take back my notebook. I spoke the truth. Thereupon, he shouted at me, Did you not see me? Really? I replied that it was a fact that I did not see him. Then he threatened me that he would beat me. I replied, As you please. At last, he realized that I was speaking the truth. He called me to his side and said, Raju, I know you are not like the other children, but I was under the impression that you were committing a mistake though you are not in the habit of doing so. That is why I was angry. You please drop into our house once tomorrow on your way back to your house. His house was on the way to our house. The next day I went to his house as per his command. I stood in the veranda thinking that I should not enter the house of a teacher without his permission. But he had already given instructions to his wife. A boy named Raju will come to our house. When he comes, you bring him in. Accordingly, she came to me and inquired, My dear son, are you Raju? I said, Yes, mother. Then you come in. Your master is calling you, she said. I went inside the house. His love for me knew no bounds. He brought two pakodas in an aluminium plate and placed it in front of me and said, Raju, I am sorry that I wanted to punish you for no fault of yours. 
I later realized my mistake. In order to correct that mistake, I would like to make friendship with you. See how our good nature, good qualities, purity, and truthful words can move and melt even a stone-hearted person. I humbly replied, "Sir, I am a young boy of about seven years. You are an elderly gentleman, and moreover, our teacher. What is your level and status, and what is mine?" How can you make friendship with me? Then he tried to convince me, saying, "My dear son, I don't entertain such differences. It is not the age or education that is important; it is the purity of heart that is important. You are a very good boy. That is why I would like to make friendship with you." So saying, he inquired whether I was studying well. I said. Yes. Then he advised me, saying, "You will have examinations next month. Study well." Our examinations commenced as per schedule. We were given two hours to answer the question paper in each subject, but I could finish writing my answers within half an hour. I placed my answer sheet on the table of the examiner. He was a bit surprised and inquired, "Raju." You don't seem to have answered the questions well. I answered, "Sir, I have written all the answers correctly. You yourself can see it tomorrow." The next day, he took out my answer sheet from the bunch and went through it. He could find therein some topics about which he himself was not aware. Then he wrote on my answer sheet, "Very, very, very, very good." In those days. Our teachers used to keep all our answer sheets with them only. The next day, he invited me to his house for coffee. He said, "You please take a cup of coffee in our house and go." I politely rejected his offer, saying, "Sir, I am not in the habit of taking coffee or tea." Then he requested me to take at least one dosa. I humbly replied, "I don't take anything at this hour." Thereupon he pleaded with me, "My dear son, you please take something, at least for my satisfaction." I could not refuse. I took a dosa to please him. The students should please their teachers. Some students are very much afraid of their teachers, but I was never afraid of our teachers. Why should I be afraid when I did not commit a mistake? The students and teachers must love each other. The students can win the hearts of their teachers with love, however tough their teachers may be. Similarly, the teachers can also mend the students with love. It is only when we love others that they will also reciprocate. The teacher should understand well the love and behavior of the students. There should be a cordial relationship between the teachers and the students. Based upon love and understanding, the most essential message of Indian culture and spirituality is Satyam Vada, Dharmam Chara. Speak truth and practice righteousness. This message has to be translated into action by one and all. In those days, the teachers could understand my nature well. On my part. I also used to be very humble, respecting the teachers and elders. Same is my message to the students even now. You cannot always oblige, but you can always speak obligingly. Sweet and soft words can melt the heart of anyone. However, we are forced to speak harshly on certain occasions. I can be harder than diamond when occasion demands, but. I can also be softer than butter in matters of love. In those days, after we returned from our school in Bukapatnam, Ishwaramma used to make all the children sit around her and inquire, "My dear children, what happened in the school today?" One day, in answer to her query, one boy informed her, "Mother, today one of our teachers made Raju stand up on the bench." 
So saying, all the children started criticizing the teacher. Ishwaramma could not bear this criticism against a teacher. She counseled the students, saying, My dear children, you should not say anything against your teacher. He must have punished our Satyam Das only for committing some mistake. No teacher would ever punish his student without some reason. So saying, she inquired from me, Satya, what mistake did you commit? Tell me. Then, I narrated the incident exactly as it had happened. Thus, the teacher ordered, Whoever has written the notes dictated by me in their notebooks may place them on my table. Others may stand up on the bench. Since I did not write the notes, I stood on the bench. However, I explained to the teacher, Sir, no doubt I did not write the notes dictated by you, but I can answer all the questions asked by you. The teacher felt offended by my reply. Expressing his annoyance, he said, How arrogant you are! and ordered me to stand up on the bench for three periods consecutively. In the meanwhile, our English teacher Mehboob Khan came that way. He was a noble soul. On seeing me standing upon the bench, he inquired from that teacher, Why did you make him stand on the bench? He replied that I had not written my notes. Mehboob Khan explained, it might be true, but he can answer any question you would ask him. Hence, ask him to sit down. What you did is a mistake. Despite Mehboob Khan's advice, the teacher Kondappa did not agree to the suggestion. In the meanwhile, the bell rang announcing the end of that period. The teacher tried to get up from his chair so that he might go to another class. But... He could not get up. He looked around to see whether his dhoti got stuck to some nail. There was no such thing. What had happened was that he himself got stuck to his chair and hence could not get up. Mehboob Khan, on seeing the plight of this teacher, told him again, We should never punish people without a reason, even if they are our students. This boy may appear to you as an ordinary boy, but there is immense divine power in him. You ask him to get down at least now. Kondappa then ordered me to get down. The moment I got down, the teacher Kondappa could get up from his chair. While the teachers were thus treating me with great love and affection, some of the boys became jealous and started developing hatred towards me. They, therefore, used to push me and drag me in the Chitravati sand holding my legs during our return trip to Puttaparthi from the school. They used to splash dirt on my clothes and tear off my shirt. But I used to keep my cool in spite of whatever they did. I used to tell them, Love is my form. Tolerance is my nature. You may do whatever you like. So saying, I used to walk up to the tank near the Anjaneya Swami temple and clean my clothes there with water. In those days, I was not having even a safety pin to put together a torn shirt. That was our condition. There was no money in the house. Nor I was prepared to borrow from someone. That was my firm resolve. There was a cactus plant near the Satyabhama temple. I used to pluck a small thorn from that plant and join the torn parts of the shirt with that thorn. Such was my firm resolve to uphold the honor and dignity of the family. One can achieve anything in life if one is wedded to truth and made such firm resolves. From that day onwards, it has been my vow not to accept anything from others. Subama was, however, anxious that I was becoming thinner and thinner day by day and therefore used to advise me, Raju, how is it you are becoming weak? In this young age, you must eat well and grow strong. My friends also used to bring whatever was prepared in their houses 
and tried to pressurize me to eat those items. But I always told them sternly not to bring any eatables from their houses for me. I firmly refused to accept those items, saying, You eat meat in your houses. You people cook fish curry in your houses. Hence, please do not bring any eatables prepared in your houses for me. In the meanwhile, our public examinations were fast approaching. They were to be held in Penugonda, a nearby taluk headquarters. In those days, people were so much afraid of going from Bukapatnam to Penugonda as if they were going to Russia or America. There were no buses even to go to Bukapatnam. There was not even a Pakka road. It was for the first time that a rail line was laid to Penugonda and a train service was introduced. The villagers used to weave fantastic stories about the train, saying, The train comes like a gigantic caterpillar with one eye. The train was the eighth wonder to the villagers in those days. They used to go to Penukonda in large numbers, making use of their bullock carts just to have a look at this strange object. Such was the condition of the villagers then. I had to go all the way from Puttaparthi to Penukonda to write my public examination. Hence, the mother of this body, Ishwarama, prepared a variety of eatables for me to eat during my journey. She was very much worried as though I was going to some distant foreign country. She, therefore, packed those items in a piece of cloth and gave it to me. There were no tiffin carriers in those days. When this body started proceeding to Penukonda, Venkamma and Parvatamma, the sisters of Swami, and all other friends and relatives could not control their emotions and started crying. They all came along with me up to Bukapatnam. From there, eight of us, students, hired a bullock cart to go to Penukonda. One of our teachers accompanied us. The roads were so bad then that if we travelled a distance of one mile in the bullock cart, we had to get down and walk for five miles. Since the entire terrain was full of ups and downs, we had to get down from the cart whenever there was a steep gradient. Thus, we underwent a lot of difficulty in getting down and again getting into the bullock cart frequently. My problem was compounded by my short stature. Even now I am short. You can imagine how tall I was in those days. I felt it would have been better had we gone on foot all the way. Further, there were other children in the bullock cart who were younger to me. Poor man! It was our teacher who had to bear all the strain of bringing down and putting them back into the bullock cart all through the journey. The teachers in those days had great love and affection for the students. We started from Bukapatnam as early as 5 o'clock in the morning and reached Penugonda as late as 9 o'clock in the night. There were no hotels or lodges for us to stay. Same was the position in the bus stand and the railway station. There was, however, one choultry on the outskirts of the town where we stayed. We had taken some rice, cereals and other essential items along with us while starting from Puttaparthi. Besides, some mirchi powder and chutney powder were also available with us. I used to cook rice for all of us. We took some rice along with chutney. Thus, we spent three days in Penugonda. I am not revealing this information out of ego or for earning a name, but it is a fact that among all the students who wrote the examination, it was only Swami who passed the examination with first class. All others failed in the examination. After we returned to Bukapatnam, the people of that town extended a warm welcome to me and took me through the streets in a big procession since I was the only student in the entire Taluka revenue area who passed the examination that too in first class. There was no further scope for me to pursue higher education in Bukapatnam. Hence, Seshama Raju, 
the elder brother of Swami, took me to Kamalapuram, his in-law's place for higher education. One day, while I was returning from Bukkapatnam, one woman was sitting on the wayside chewing pan and combing the hair of her daughter to spot lies. She did not notice my coming that way. She suddenly spat, which fell on my shirt. I cannot describe in words the embarrassment she felt on noticing that her spit fell on me and spoiled my shirt. Immediately, she brought a towel from inside her house, wrapped it around me, removed my shirt and washed it clean then and there. Such was the love and affection shown by the villagers in those days. They were such noble and simple folk that they remembered till their end any help that they might have received from others. The reason why I am narrating this incident is to stress the point that purity and gratitude are very important qualities for a human being. In fact, ingratitude cannot be atoned for. Hence, you must be grateful till your end to those people from whom you had received help of any kind. During my childhood, even people who were twenty to thirty years older to me used to approach me with a request to teach them alphabets. They used to make a living by raising flower gardens and selling flowers. As soon as I came home, I used to teach them alphabets. Hence, they respected me very much, saying, Raju is our guru, teacher. When they came to know that I would be leaving for Kamalapuram shortly, they were very much disappointed. They brought one paisa each as Guru Dakshina, a token of gratitude to the teacher. I told them, Why are you offering me this money? Keep it with you. But they insisted on my accepting this token of their love and gratitude towards me. Their Guru Dakshina added up to twelve paisa. They followed me by walk up to Bukapatnam. They repeatedly inquired from me, Raju, when will you return to our village? Such was the love and affection of the villagers in those days. But today, the situation is totally in contrast to that. The humanness has declined on account of modern education. The sense of gratitude has become extinct. That is the reason why the country is facing several difficulties today. The most important quality of a human being is gratitude. The villagers of those days used to conduct themselves with a great sense of gratitude, respect and courtesy.